Hello, YouTube. It's me, John Avenger, once again. And welcome back to Guns Galore here on my channel. This time I'm reviewing a film from 1988. One of the greatest films ever made. One of the classic, iconic uh, family films of all time. It's a mix of live action and animation. Hand-drawn animation. And that is the classic Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yes, this movie has guns in it, so it counts. This got four Academy Award nomina uh, nominations and won. That's awesome. And it's definitely one of the highlights of my childhood. I watched this a lot as a kid, and it did not screw me up as an adult. Uh, the critics said, brilliantly funny. Yes, uh, it, it cracks me up. Extraordinary. Extraordinary. Los Angeles Times. And this DVD has a ton of special features, and it has uh, this cool... Uh, safe look looking thing it looks like a journal look at that it's cool look at that there's a uh, bob hoskins may he rest in peace i miss him and there's a uh, roger rabbit voiced by the great charles fleischer yeah he was in nightmare on elm street and a bunch of other things this set is really cool look at that i've had this set for over 15 years and it's still cool here's the, the little notepad yeah that's how much of a big a fan i am of this movie i played the video game but it's horrible the NES game, yeah, there's the little notes. That's cool. And this is the uh, the postcard. Maroon Studios, uh, Roger, and his wife, yeah, Jessica Rabbit. That's, uh, this is the character my sister was named after, because her name is Jessica, and named after this character. One of the most beloved uh, animated characters, uh, sexy animated characters of all time. Now, what is the plot of this movie? Well, everybody knows this plot who's seen this classic, iconic uh, Spielberg and, and Robert Zemeckis production, because I think Spielberg was one of the executive producers. Uh, yeah, and Kathleen Kennedy, but this is before she was the devil of cinema, you know, the freaking worst producer in you know for this franchise, but we'll, we're, not, we're not getting into that. In 19, it's 1947 Hollywood. Eddie Valiant, Bob Hoskins, a down-on-his-luck detective, is hired to find proof that Marvin Acme, gag factory bogle and owner of Toontown, is playing hanky-panky with femme fatale Jessica Rabbit, wife of maroon cartoon superstar Roger Rabbit. When Acme is found murdered, yes, there, there, people die in this movie. It's a PG movie from the 80s, so basically a PG-13 all fingers point to Roger and the sinister, power-hungry Judge Doom. Yeah, Christopher Lloyd in a great performance. This is what he did after Back to the Future, so he's he can play a good villain and a great hero. He is on a mission to bring Roger to justice. Roger begs the tune-hating Valiant to find the real evildoer, and the plot thickens as Eddie uncovers scandal after scandal and realizes the very existence of Toontown is at stake. Who Framed Roger Rabbit is a deliciously, outrageously fun the whole family will enjoy. Well, that depends on, on on the tolerance of your children. Like, don't be fooled. This movie starts like a cartoon where Roger's trying to uh, save baby Herman from getting cookies and he gets hurt. But there's a lot of violence in this movie for a PG movie. You have uh, um, uh, you have people getting murdered. You have uh, cartoons getting dipped. You have uh, the animated shoe get melting. You have these creepy weasels that they look like dogs, but they're, they're weasels. And uh, one of them has... His name is Smartass, which they never say his name, but that's his name. One of them has crazy eyes, is in a straight jacket. The other smokes a lot. So, yeah, this was a different time for animation. This is when they can smoke in a kid's movie, and it would not get a, an R rating. Also, this has a lot of iconic nostalgia. Oh, my God. Screw you, Rise of Skywalker. This has way more nostalgia than you, and it's a shorter movie. This movie is an hour and 44 minutes, and it's like 20 or 30 minutes shorter than you. And the nostalgia just beams. This has the most cartoon characters gathered in, in, a, in a single film that will never happen again. You have Bugs Bunny. You have Mickey Mouse. You have freaking Tweety Bird. You have Sylvester. You have Daffy Duck and Donald Duck playing the piano together. You're never going to see that in, a, in, a, in an MCU movie or any Disney crossover with Fox. You have... Um, what, who, what else do you have? You have these animated bullets that come out of a, uh, an animated gun that Eddie Valiant uses to shoot uh, Doom, uh, but he misses. Uh, you have, uh, what other cartoons you have? You have the Three Little Pigs and a lot of public domain stuff. 
some of the most iconic cartoon characters from your childhood, if you grew up like me watching, you know, uh, Fl Fleischer cartoons and Tex Avery and Walt Disney and the, and the Warner Brothers. Yeah, there's so many cartoons here. It's amazing. This is why it's one of the most iconic movies ever made. The visual effects, yes, they still hold up. There is no CGI in this movie at all. Everything was done practically. The animation, the 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 the, you know, the effects of, of the scene when see uh, when Doom has his eyes and they turn red at the end. Well, I don't want to spoil too much, but. Yeah, the animation is just phenomenal. And Pixar would, would be proud of this movie because it did it all without computers. And uh, yeah, the, the film just is it's iconic. It's so hilarious. There's a scene where Roger's in, in a bar and he's hitting his helmet him with plates and it's like, no pain, no pain. I always say cocaine because, you know, that's what they were on when they came up with some of the plot for this movie. Because let's face it, they, nobody normal did a movie this crazy. And uh, th there's a scene where there's a fake Jessica Rabbit that chases after Eddie Valiant, uh, voiced by the great, um, what was her name, uh, June um, Foray, yeah, the voice of uh, Rocky from Rocky and Bullwinkle. May she rest in peace as well. There's a lot of talent here we don't have anymore, and I miss them a lot. Um, we still have Charles Fleischer, though. If they do a sequel to this, just do it all animated, because there's no way you can do it a, a, a live action again. Without Bob Hoskins, it's going to feel like something missing, just like the... Reason Fast and the Furious movies without Paul Walker. Alan Silvestri did the score. I love that man's work. He did Back to the Future. He did The Avengers. He did uh, Predator 2. And I don't know if he did the first Predator, but he's just he's phenomenal. He's basically the younger uh, John Williams. And you could tell that there's a lot of influence in this movie. Joanna Cassidy is also great. She's a gorgeous woman. Uh, as Dolores, you know, she helps Eddie... Uh, you know, through the movie, and she's, they don't get to kiss because it's a PG movie. They're always teasing it, but their chemistry is un, is undeniable. I love Bob Hoskins' New York accent. I love it, yeah. It's a Brit that did a New York accent years before Tom Holland did it as Spider-Man, but he, he nailed it. I've always loved him in this movie, loved him in the Mario Brothers movie. I liked him in Hollywoodland and, and a bunch of stuff. He was just a great actor. I miss him. His last film was Snow and the Huntsman. But it's not the worst thing he's done. He did Son of the Mask and Garfield too. So yeah, he's also done some stinkers. But what a great performance here! Uh, you have uh, iconic music. You have a, a sword that that sings like uh, what's his name, Frank Sinatra. Of course, millennials aren't going to get half of the jokes here because they're going to be like, "Wait, I don't know these cartoons. I don't know these references." Read a book. Look it up. Uh, Solves, uh, you know, Yosemite Sam makes an appearance, but it's not Mel Blanc's voice. Yeah, Mel Blanc. Did the voice of Bugs and Daffy and most of the Looney Tunes here. Mel Blanc, this is what he did before he died. May he rest in peace. One of the, the greatest voice actor to ever exist. I take my hat off to him. Without him, I would never know how to do voices. But uh, yeah, this has a phenomenal cast. There's other people in the movie. You have General Mahdi from Star Wars is in this movie. Yeah, he's uh, Lieutenant Santino. He talks to Eddie about, you know, let's let's get this over with where they're looking at the the uh, evidence uh, that they think Roger did it. Uh, there's a guy that has a hammer that shoots a fist. I mean, I remember almost everything in this movie because I've seen it so many times. And I love it to pieces. I love it so much. Are there flaws? Uh, yeah, but uh, I really don't know what to say. Uh, some characters kind of are on screen like once and you don't see them again. There's a clown. Uh, but, you know, it, to really appreciate the film, you have to see it multiple times because you're not going to get all the references. There's a hippo from Fantasia, uh, Blink and You Miss It. You know, you have buildings, you have faces, you have the uh, Snow White and the, and the Evil uh, Queen walking. If you see the widescreen version, don't see the full screen version because then you're not going to see everything. Um, there's little birds that fly. There's butterflies. There's a lot of things, man. This is the perfect movie if you're stoned out of your mind, if you're on LSD. That's basically what it is. It's your cartoon favorites come to life right in front of your face in the, in the real world. The acting is great. Like, I don't have a problem with the acting at all. Um, well, I would say the guy that plays um, Maroon is, he's just there. Like, he's just, he's like, ah, he, he kind of overacts. He thinks he's a cartoon, but no, I, I think Christopher Lloyd is a way better actor than him. I don't remember his face. Um, uh, Eddie's, uh, you know, a te uh, temper. Yeah, I get it. He doesn't want to hang around cartoons uh, because he's, you know, he's pissed. He's an alcoholic. That's another thing you won't see in the, in a Disney movie now. 
And but I love the scene. There's an empowering scene at the end where when he gets the the animated bullets with southern accents and he puts them into the gun, he's like, "Who's feeling frisky?" Yeah, and he spills the booze and throws it in the air. And the and the and the Native American, I'm gonna say Native American, so I'm not racially insensitive. He he hits the freaking uh, glass bottle with a tomahawk and goes, Aah! and I'm like, "Yeah, it's a stereotype, but it was 1947, so you can't blame it too much." But it's an empowering scene. That doesn't have to say anything about gender. No, it's a great scene. He's like, I'm not going to drink anymore. I'm going to do this sober. And it's it's amazing. And I love the scene where Bob Hoskins is like doing, you know, the, the Looney Tunes thing. And he's like jumping around and falling. He, he was a great actor, man. I miss him. I miss him like crazy. And I would never say that with a Brit now because they're just not funny. They don't have a sense of humor. They don't, they're not comedic. They don't have as much comedic timing as Bob Hoskins did or Simon Pegg or... Nick Frost, or people like that, or John Cleese. You know, now we have we have uh, Tom Hardy doing uh, burping noises and Venom. It's not the same thing, guys. That's just that's being cartoonish and something that's supposed to be taken seriously. This is a cartoon. You have cartoon characters. Oh yeah, the voice of Jessica Rabbit. I forgot to mention it. Uh, Kathleen Turner, a better Kathleen, if you if you ask me. She was gorgeous back in the day. She's still alive. I, I missed that. I, I miss. I haven't seen her in a movie in like ages. I respect the hell out of her because she's one of the only actors in this movie that's not credited. Uh, the voice of Benny the Cab is also Charles Fleischer. He does several voices in this movie. Um, yeah, the voice acting is fantastic. Like everything about it. But Mel Blanc when he's Bugs Bunny and he's falling, and Mickey Mouse's voice by Wayne Allwine because you know Walt Disney passed away a long time ago. I miss him too. Uh, I miss both of them, you know. He said, you have a spare? And he's like, okay, Doc, whatever you say, here's the spare. And he gives him a spare tire, and he starts falling from the sky. Oh, man, every frame of this movie makes me smile. It just, I just love it. I love this movie so much. It's a perfect 10. Like, uh, Unlike the Lego movie, which I kind of lost respect for because of some of the lead characters, you know who you are. And, uh, yeah, this movie's better. This movie has everything the Lego movie has in spades, and it doesn't pander. And it doesn't have actors who have big mouths. And it doesn't have dated um, effects or anything like that or references. This movie is a perfect animated live-action hybrid. After Mary Poppins, this is it. Like, this is the crowning achievement of animation. I also do like Looney Tunes back in action and uh, Space Jam. But there are some dated references in that. This is a timeless classic. It, it ends with a... With a Porky Pig saying, that's all, folks. And then Tinkerbell uh, sprinkles, uh, you know, uses her wand. It's a perfect ending. Like, the way it ends is just beautiful. It's a work of art. This is a masterpiece, man. And there are guns in it. Like I said, uh, uh, Ju Judge Doom shoots Marvin, uh, uh, you know, Maroon. And uh, Jessica Rabbit has a gun and shoot and helps save Zeddy's life, you know, when he's in the alleyway. And, uh, you know, Roger has a gun. Of course, he doesn't use it because, you know, it wouldn't be cool for the protagonist to use a gun on, on characters, even though he's a cartoon. The Weasels have a lot of personality. Uh, they are uh, if the if the review is random is because the movie definitely has a lot of random scenes. There's a scene where he's in the ink and, and paint club and uh, there's a gorilla. And he's like, Why is this? yeah, they do curse in this movie a couple times. So it's not exactly a kid's, you know, it's not frozen. I'll tell you that. But it's just every frame of this movie. You have Betty Boop in a cameo, Jessica Rabbit's intro. Can I, do I need to say anything? No, see it for yourself. You'll you'll get what I mean. And and got people wonder why I like girls because yeah, one of the hottest animated characters ever. And I'm like yeah, but you know her voice is real and her singing voice was real too. But yeah, this is a classic. If you've not seen this movie, get off your ass and see it. I think it's on Netflix. Oh no, it's on Disney Plus. If you have Disney Plus, you're gonna love this film. And if you have kids, well, it depends on their tolerance. If they can't handle really creepy eyes and and uh, you know and and crazy imagery and shooting and smoking and craziness, then this might not be them their their cup of tea. But it is for me. I love this movie. I grew up with this film. I watched it a lot on VHS. When I finally got the DVD, I watched it so many times. Yeah, I'm not getting rid of the DVD because it's on Disney Plus. Because the special features are worth it alone. There's cartoons. There's behind the scenes. There's a bunch of commentaries which are definitely advisable to listen to. They do have this on Blu-ray, so. But uh, yeah, I love this movie so much. And uh, you know, it's a classic, and it deserves your your time. It's an '80s classic and one of the best films of all time, and I just love it. And 
it, it's the story still holds up and the acting and, and the animation and live action. Everything is, it fits and it's worth your time. And it's real nostalgia, not Rise of Skywalker. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next review, guys. Peace.